here we are, and here and now, we're in, facing the largest genocide since the Holocaust is taking place and continues to take place, and they're not willing to listen to uh, the International Court of Justice uh, conditions. They're planning to open up another front into Lebanon, not at the frontier of Lebanon, but they're planning to invade Lebanon now. This is the latest word from the Minister of uh, Defense, so-called Gallant. Uh, so, okay, they think they can get away with this. I don't think so. I think that they're going to destroy their state. And even the Israelis are going to turn against the state, you know, because they're going to see, you know, like how much trouble it's caused for them and how much opposition is created in the world. I mean, that may be opt optimistic. What do you think? Hey, Ram, I think any, any, uh, any increase of aggression by the Zionist military forces is being done with the complete support and um, hmm. funding from the United States. So Israel is making these moves with the support and funding of the United States. So it is a continuation of the U.S.-Israel-Western alliance against the Palestinians. Um, that's how I see it. If it, it, the issue of territorial integrity of Lebanon is simply erased, the issue of the territorial integrity of, of Syria, of Iraq, is simply um, not on the on the table for discussion by these aggressors, and the people of Iraq, Syria, Lebanon, and Palestine will continue to receive our solidarity and support as they take up as as they take on the bullies of the United States and and and, and Israel. Mm. Yeah. Oh, Yemen continues. They hit an American destroyer. Interesting. <laughs> an American destroyer. USA destroyer. <laughs> hit by um, a ragtag, you know, um, uh, rebel rebel group, you know, that has uh, won the revolution in Yemen, has the support of the overwhelming uh, population, and, uh, you know, still have, uh, still are taking on uh, the big powers. And they're also uh, going to uh, be uh, concerned with uh, uh, getting control over the eastern sector of Yemen, where the oil resources are. They don't have control over the oil resources there yet. That's still under the control of who knows what. Like well, in Syria, where the US is occupying oil fields. I, I'm glad you raised that because I wanted to talk about that today. I, I sent you uh, some information on my interest in discussing that matter. Um, I don't know how many years the US has been in control of the oil fields in Syria, as it's called. But I would like to know more about what that means, being in control of the oil fields. For example, does that mean that you're simply occupying them? Or does that mean that you're actually extracting the oil, removing it from the country, and selling it? If so, who is extracting the oil? Where are the profits going? Under what Oh, excuse me, I shouldn't say law because bandits and criminals like U.S. and privileged don't operate off law. They're, they're, they're just a big mafia gang. But I would like to know more about how this actually works. Because I remember Trump saying, well, at least we have the oil now when the U.S. forces arrived in Syria. All of our watch viewers and listeners should re remember there is no legitimacy to U.S. occupation anywhere in the world, even if the government says it's okay to be there. That's, that, that's our political view. And in Syria, there definitely was no, no, no approval given by the U.S. for by Syria for the U.S. forces to occupy the oil fields. So what do you, what do you know about that, Abraham? Or maybe some of our viewers can shed some light on how the control of the oil fields, what does that mean? Because mm -hmm. it means that Syrian wealth is being extracted against the Syrian people's interests it is a great crime against humanity. Hmm. Yeah. Well, from what I've uh, heard previously, 
not recently, but probably the same thing is happening, is that they're sending oil tankers from Syria into Iraq to supply the allies of the U.S. in Iraq. So, and uh, also they send the oil to Iraq to be resold, and the money comes back to finance their whole uh, gambit there. So, so you know, and they're so they're also looting the uh, the reserves. You know, three hundred billion dollars in Russian reserves to pay for the arms to the Ukraine, <laughs> as well. <laughs> this is a real mafia, like you say. You know, like so. So, so they they take the oil from the Syrian ground, the ground of Syria, from the from the oil tankers, etc., the oil fields. They put it on tankers. They take the oil somewhere to be used for you for for um, U.S. imperialists um, on on the tax, and they also sell it. This is this is this 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 is um, beyond um, no excuse me. It's not beyond um, belief because they stole the land from the native people. They took the resources from the native people. They they pillage the native people's land of of which America is based. So, if 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 so, you do it at home, expect yourself to do it abroad. Yep, that's what's going on. Mm. Okay, so the Jewish vigil at the uh, Jewish community campus is continuing. Last week, you know, I put up the um, body cam videos for the whole day. Okay. 21 videos and the uh the second and the fifth video maybe the fourth as well have these zionists coming up to me you know like arguing you know like starting off by yelling you know as before you know they're trying to ignore me you know or say that you know uh you know i was inconsequential that it wasn't that uh, i was wasting my time there but now they're worried you know the international court of justice you know all of a sudden they come up to me you know trying to convince me otherwise then that gives me a chance to convince them otherwise. And uh, they don't have the backing, you know, like they don't have the information. I have, yeah, I wanted to show you on uh, on the website, you know, that I was referred to by one of the Zionists. Well, I was referred to two websites. One was called uh, hamasmassacre.com. You know, it's supposed to have the proof. So, you know, it has a list of all the accusations and then you're supposed to click on each accusation and it's supposed to take you to the videos which provide you with the proof. So as I proved in the previous, you know, uh, Here Now, which is online, in the part two, uh, you know, the videos are not there, none, you know. So I told the uh, young guy, you know, whose father's a rabbi actually of the Reconstructionist, Reconstructionist uh, synagogue movement, and he said, oh, no, no, okay, not that one, not that one. Okay, you know, like the one you should go to is Hamas.com. So I said, yes, I've heard of that, you know, like from Gray Zone, from Aaron Maté, my friend, you know, from when we started, you know, a Jewish opposition movement in Concordia University a long time ago when he was vice president of the student union here in Montreal at Concordia University. So I went to Hamas.com on another computer, and just in case, you know, like as Aaron said, he was concerned that it would have spyware, you know, on it, you know, that would download on your computer. Okay, so I went to it on, the, on, the, on another computer, and they have all the accusations there again, and then they have some videos, but the videos don't show what the accusations say. So the most, uh, uh, you know, they show, you know, body cam uh, videos, you know, from the Hamas fighters, soldiers, who are doing what soldiers do. And uh, the videos don't even show all that much. But there was one video in which a woman didn't have her pants on, but she had her panties on, you know, so, and that's supposed to be proof of rape, but it isn't. So this rape thing is, is a very important accusation and they will continue with it, you know, because there's a passage in the, uh, in the Torah at which uh, the, uh, the, the daughter of, uh, of Jacob, Diana, uh, and he had 12 sons, you know, the 12 tribes of Jacob and all that. Okay, so she was raped by some guy in a village. So the brothers, they all went into the village, you know, and eventually, you know, carried out the massacre and destroyed everybody. And then when their father, Jacob, heard about this, he said, what are you doing? You can't do that. Now, the Zionists used that as an excuse, you know, for the genocide in Gaza, saying that, you know, like rape, you know, is a, qualifies as a justification for genocide. But they don't mention that Jacob was against that. And 
you know, this is uh, this is one sort of, you know, aspect of the manipulation of the Torah and the uh, and Judaism, you know, that the Zionists use. They pretend, you know, to be Judaic, you know, but they aren't. And if you go to the original sort of, you know, like what they refer to as the covenant, uh, you know, the original one, you know, the first reference to a covenant with Abraham for the land of, what does it say in the Torah? It says the land of Canaan. It doesn't say Israel. <laughs> no, it says Canaan. In the land of Canaan, you know, like Abraham and his descendants are welcome. They say, take possession of the land, you know, and all that. But it doesn't mean, you know, that it belongs to them, you know, because in Judaism, you know, the land, you know, the earth, you know, the universe belongs to God. <laughs> you know, point, you know, like, that's it, that's all, you know. Like, there's, you know, no sort of, you know, inherent, you know, like, uh, uh, right of possession of land unless you're living on it and the palestinians you know are so you know all that's falling apart but you know to get to to the jewish community to say that you know you have to pass through so much censorship that the only way in which i could get to speak with jewish people was to go out there on the street in front of the jewish community campus and speak to them one by one the only way to get through the censorship so and that's what i'm doing and now I've uh, put together a statement called an, an appeal, Palestinian and Jewish appeal to the Jewish people to stop, you know, for ceasefire in Gaza. And this is, you know, one strategic way in which, you know, this the genocide can be stopped if Jewish people, you know, in mass, you know, demand that it be stopped and demand that the, their Israeli relatives, you know, like, you know, get serious and stop being uh, fascist. And if, you know, that's told, you know, by other Jewish people, especially the other members of the family, you know, <laughs> that has an effect. So that and force, you know, the two strategic ways, you know, to stop the genocide in Gaza, because the International Court of Justice means nothing to them. And now they're planning, you know, to expand the war into Lebanon itself to go after who? Hezbollah, who? The allies of the Palestinians. And what are they going to do to the Palestinians there? Huh, like they did last time, you know, in Sabr Shatila. Uh, refugee camps, you know, there was a massacre of 3,000 Palestinian in three days, done by agents, you know, the Zionists called the Phalanges, you know, a local crusader group, you know, who are hanging around there still, still trying to take over the country. So that's the way it is. I hope Well comes on to this, you know, recording, you know, because he was just speaking to me before well, he had some visitors there, saying that he well, really appreciated the Jewish vigil at the uh, Jewish community campus here in Montreal. He thinks it's a very strong action. Well, I would like to just um, throw a couple of things at the fire for some conversation. One is the, the supposed peace, um, not peace plan, but pause or retreat or whatever they're working on mm. to supposedly stop the fighting soon. Mm. What do you, what, what have you heard about that in, and what do you think about these this uh, uh, Qatar-based um, idea that the, the State Department, U.S. State Department, is is um, um, shopping around as some great development? Hmm. Yeah. Well, I don't think so. Yeah. Yeah. The, re the reason why I'm asking is if there if there's supposed to be a if there is a movement by Western allies of Israel to first stop the stop the aggression by the Zionist army and then have a conference on a two state solution, I can't see Israel agreeing to either of those things. Now. The pressure to release release the prisoners, the captives, the prisoners held by Israel and held by the Palestinian national forces, that might that might cause a a um, thawing of the Israeli stance because many people in the country that we see on TV anyway, are demanding that Israel, quote, do more, end quote, to mm -hmm. obtain the release of the prisoners that mm -hmm. were taken on uh, October 7th. 
that Israel wow. continued to fight, they continued to fight, but they're fighting, those prisoners will not be released. Hmm. Yeah. Many of them will probably perish in, in an Israeli army attack yeah. of some sort. Yeah. So I was thinking, in at least what I have heard from news reports, and I have not verified it by looking on, online, is that elements of the Palestinian resistance support this idea of this either uh, freeze or, th or some kind of 30 day not fighting situation. And they have not said anything about releasing their prisoners, but I do think that is part of the deal, the behind the scenes deal, is that yeah. some prisoners will be released on, on both sides. Um, yeah. Israel opposes the two state solution in general. And I'm just curious what that, if, if this proposal is actually being shopped around and might be implemented, what would that mean for Israel's now stated desire to attack Lebanon? Are there some shift the war to Lebanon and leave Gaza uh, a, alone for a month while they focus on Hezbollah? Are they going to try to operate on two fronts? And what about the world resistance, the world movement of Jewish and people, Jewish people and, 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 and their allies to end the occupation entirely? Are, are those forces going to oppose any incursion into Lebanon? I'm just gonna some questions that come up, come up in, in, uh, in my thinking. Yeah, these are questions that everybody, you know, like is thinking about. And, uh, you know, Hamas has responded, you know, like their negotiating position is that, you know, the, uh, um, you know, th the war has to stop. And these, you know, the Zionist troops have to withdraw from Gaza in order for them to release all of the host all of the prisoners of war. As for civilian hostages, there could be an exchange of civilian hostages for a uh, truce period of, uh, before it was seven days, you know, for a month, you know, what they're talking about. Right, right. But the uh, prisoners of war, the military hostages, the soldiers that were taken hostage, they're not going to be released because that would, um, you know, like that would be the only thing left, you know, for Hamas, you know, to negotiate with. And if they released all the hostages, if they released all the prisoners of war, if they released all the soldiers and the three generals that they have under their control, if they released all of them, then Israel would just continue with the genocide, right. you know, forever. So, well, let me just say something to you, just so I can explain my narrative. When I say prisoners of war, I'm referring to what the media calls the hostages. Yeah, but I because I see them as prisoners held held by the Palestinian National Liberation Forces. Prisoners is part of the war that Israel is carrying out against them, and they were taken capture in as part of the battles. So I guess there are other prisoners, prisoners of war, or captives, but maybe I, I call them captives. Uh, right, and I, th and I think what I understood was that the goal of the Palestinian Liberation Forces is to is obtain the freedom of those prisoners of war that 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 Israel holds, yeah. And this is supposed to be some part of, part of the um, of uh, discussions that that you know that are occurring. I don't know. Mm. Yeah. Well, in those uh, prisons of war, you know, they're being held by Hamas. So far, they're lucky, you know, because they weren't killed by Hamas. Hamas didn't, you know, want to kill them. You know, they only True. had to, you know, like shoot, you know, like soldiers that were shooting at them. And also, right. you know, set settlers, squatters, you know, in the, in the towns around Gaza, you know, if they were shooting at them, they were sh shot back at. Okay. Right. right. So the ones that were captured, you know, are lucky, are, are, are fortunate they were captured, you know, and not in, you know, fighting against Hamas, you know. And right. so, uh, you know, that's all that Hamas has right now is, you know, these uh, soldiers. To hold on to. I got now, you know, yeah, yeah. that's that's their that's their sort of you know like duty, and uh, the international uh, protests uh, is another another duty, and the internal uh, Jewish revolt is my duty, and uh, there's uh, many Jewish organizations that are demonstrating that are protesting you know, but not inside the Jewish community, that's the problem, 
you know, because, you know, sure, okay, they're doing, you know, public, you know, actions, you know, in the public domain, you know, educating the public in general, and that's helping a great deal. But they have to get inside the Jewish community and counter the uh, propaganda that the Jewish community is being subjected to. They have to, you know, the American Jewish Voice for Peace, they have to walk right into the, you know, American Jewish Congress, the all-inclusive, you know, Jewish organization. Oh, we have a call from Yemen. These are the the Yemen comrade, you know, that I wanted to bring into the uh, into the recording today, you know, but um, he couldn't uh, get a Zoom installed or Zoom wasn't working, you know, from Yemen. So something went wrong there, you know. Hello? No, the microphone's not working. Speaker's working. Really, a lot of difficulties in getting in contact with Yemen. They're probably they're probably they're probably um, interrupting the transmission of communications. The the, the imperialist media, the imperialist communications uh, system, the armed forces. Yeah, cameras on. Yeah, yeah. that's probably what's on my mobile on. phone here. Hello, Machava. Hello, hello. I'm not getting their connection. Okay. Okay, I'll just leave it here. Okay, so that's Yemen that I oh, made contact right. with. You know that I was trying to get into this. Uh, we'll we'll do it some other way. And right. uh, also, Wael is uh, waiting in Palestine. You know, perhaps he's going to jump in. And uh, Ahmad of Palestine, he's uh, working today, so he can't get in here. But uh, I did well, an you. interview with him on uh, Wednesday, and that is up on uh, YouTube. Very good, you know, discussion with him. Well, so let's, uh, let's, let me ask you this about the something that you just raised. I, I want to follow up on it. You mentioned that you thought that pe the Jewish uh, Voices for Peace should go up into the American Jewish Congress and yeah. make struggle. Um, yeah. How? How would that happen? Is that happening now? Hmm. What What does Jewish Voice for Peace say about such a proposal? They haven't even considered it. They haven't even thought about it. You know, they haven't even heard about it. Like here in Canada, I went to the Canadian uh, Jewish Congress with uh, three other members of the Alliance of Concerned Jewish Canadians way back in 2008. They wouldn't register us as delegates, even though every Jewish person is supposed to be able to register, you know, and have a voice and vote in the Canadian Jewish Congress. It's supposed to be, you know, like direct democracy. Yeah. So they wouldn't register, register us that day, even though at a previous, you know, uh, uh, year's conference, you know, we did get registered and I did speak. Wouldn't register us. And then when we were sitting in, they were, we were only registered as observers. And when we were sitting in the plenary, I tried to speak, you know, against the motion from Bernie Farber, you know, the Zionist, you know, so-called liberal Zionist, who moved the motion to dissolve, you know, the Canadian Jewish Congress, because they didn't want to hear from Jewish people anymore, basically. So I tried to speak against it, wouldn't let me speak. Then he came down with, you know, his sergeant of arms and threatened, you know, me with violence, you know, if, if I didn't stop talking. So, you know, in order to be nice, you know, inside the Jewish community, you know, I, I stopped talking there, you know, and then they passed a the motion. I made a complaint, you know, to the um, uh, Revenue Canada Agency, you know, that uh, the Canadian Jewish Congress, you know, is registered, you know, as uh, as a charitable organization, you know, and I'm pointing out, you know, that they, you know, uh, just, you know, moved to close the, uh, shut down a plenary session of the Canadian Jewish Congress and uh, did so illegally because they didn't have a quorum at the time. And they didn't even have enough votes of the people who were there you know, because they were going to vote against it because they knew what was going on, even though they were all quiet. So what happened is that all of a sudden, 14 Mizrahim, French-speaking, you know, Jewish Arabs who were, you know, uh, 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 basically servants of the Zionist, uh, you know, machine here in Montreal, all of a sudden they came into the uh, plenary session. Plenary session was declared to be closed so that nobody else could come in. Doors were locked. And that's when I wasn't allowed to speak. And that's when the motion was passed to dissolve the Canadian Jewish Congress. This is what, you know, like, <laughs> 
So in the American Jewish Congress is still open. So Jewish Voice of Priests has to go in there. If there's a plenary, they have to walk right in. They have to insist upon being able to speak and being able to vote. This is, you know, the very principle of the, of the Congress structure. There's even a World Jewish Congress, you know, but so far they're supporting um, the Zionists. So there has to be some sort of movement inside the American Jewish Congress. Imagine if the American Jewish Congress passed a motion to condemn the genocide in Gaza, and that went to the World Jewish Congress, and that was passed. You know, every Jewish person in the world would hear about that. That would break through the censorship. Yes, they would. Yes, they would. Um, have, have, have you been in contact with anyone from Jewish Voices for Peace to make this proposal then? Yes. Uh, our comrades in uh, Phoenix, Arizona, are going to uh, do an intervention in the uh, Jewish Voice for Peace. They're going to join Jewish Voice for Peace, and they're going to be able to, uh, from that position, they're going to be able to propose that the JVP, you know, uh, do some intervention inside the Jewish community and, you know, speak to the Jewish community and not just to the general public, because that's not enough. Right. right. Yeah. yeah. And, that, and I, I, I recall that that has been one of your one of your principal uh, vectors for in a, for intervention in all of our discussions, Abraham, that you've insisted that um, there must be much more work, targeted work inside the uh, the Jewish community uh, internationally and everyone inside their their respective nations, because that because this this is the community that um, the that the Zionist state claims to speak for, and also. That it draws support from, or it claims to draw support from. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. It's yeah. like the uh, the KKK claiming to speak on behalf of the United States of America, <laughs> and uh, that that uh, that worked for a while, but yeah, worked for a while. But it it's not uh, it's not something no. that uh, can last, you know, because there's. Uh, there's many ways in order to uh, get around that. And there's many ways to get around the Zionists as well. And uh, at the uh, Jewish vigil, the Jewish Bund vigil, at the Jewish community campus here in Marielle, we have gotten around it. The Zionists are not that powerful. They only sort of, you know, guilt trip people into supporting them because they insist upon, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, non-Jewish people supporting Jewish people. Okay, fine, you know, but they claim, you know, to be the Jewish people. And that uh, they are the ones you know to be supported. It's not true. It's not true at all. They're only a faction, a minority in a faction within the Jewish people that live in Israel. And even there, you know, it's only about 50-50 that are supporting you know, Zionist ideology per se. All the rest, you know, don't consider themselves to be Zionists anymore. They're just Israelis and just they were born there, so they have no other choice, you know, but to live there. Only 17% of the Israelis have geo citizenship, have a passport, you know, to be able to get a visa to go anywhere else. Although uh, there's supposed to be, you know, visa entry for Israelis into the United States, but they ran into a snag there, you know, because they realized, you know, that Israelis, you know, also included Palestinians. <laughs> so if they gave, you know, like, you know, free visas, you know, to all Israelis, you know, all of a sudden they would find, you know, themselves with one million Palestinians, you know, moving into the United States of America. And they will, of course, you know, choose one particular spot. <laughs> and then, you know, they could take on the whole, you know, USA state, you know, from there. So they don't, uh, so that, you know, I think proposal for automatic visas, you know, to Israelis, you know, was stopped in its tracks. So only 70%, you know, have a dual citizenship, you know, can get out. All the rest have to stay there. So they have to be, you know, accommodated in some kind of a way. But of course, you know, the criminals cannot be accommodated. Those who are guilty of war crimes and all of that, you know, can be easily tabulated, you know, because like the Nazis, you know, they're very good, you know, at bookkeeping and, uh, and, uh, and uh, organizational records and all that sort of thing. So... Every soldier who participated in a war crime, you know, can be found, you know, within the archives of the Zionist military, and they can be prosecuted, you know, along those lines, because the evidence, you know, will be there. They're keeping the evidence because they think they're going to win. <laughs> oh, my. So we're running out of time. And uh, we don't have well, and we don't have Ahmad, and we don't have Yemen this time okay but i'll try to set it up for next week you know that would be fascinating if we could have a conference like that international break through the censorship not only against zionism oh. but against you know usa censorship you know to yemen yes. 
making I, contact I, with Yemen for the first time, we've got to do that. I, I, I really call upon our viewers, you know, to like to like our program on YouTube. The algorithms help us reach other people. And also to send ideas and comments in the chat. Let us know what you're thinking, some suggestions. If in, in any way we can work together, Abraham, this week to make this international conference next week happen on 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 this show, that, that would be a great a great thing to do. Because yeah. we would allow we would to hear voices from other parts of the world who can inform you and I and our our viewers about what is really happening on the ground. Yeah, yeah. Our work here is uh, essential, revolutionary, and uh, unprecedented. Even the gray zone, you know, only sort of you know deals with uh, the matters uh, at a level of journalism because they are journalists. And they've been trained to be journalists, but here. We are political theorists. We go beyond, you know, what the empirical sort of, you know, facts have to say for the moment, because we right. are trying to find a way to overcome the facts and not just to report the facts. Excellent. Yeah. Well so, said. Well said. So, all the viewers, please share. We need this to be shared everywhere, on all platforms. Okay. Way. Okay. And as we say. In Arabic, yalla.